Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at defining electromotive force, EMF equation, energy transfer calculation and we're going to finish with a summary. So we're going to start off by defining what electromotive force actually is. We have seen that the potential difference is the work done by charge carriers per unit charge travelling through a component. So for example, here we have a circuit, this is our battery, this is our lamp, and we've got a charge carrier here, which in this case is an electron. And this electron is moving through this light bulb. And it's harder for this electron to pass through the light bulb than it is for it to pass through the metal wires that make up the circuit. So it's going to need to do some work. And we call the potential difference, which is PD, the work done per unit charge. So it's the work done per charge that actually passes through the component. And this energy is lost by the charge carriers and is transferred to other forms by the component. So for example, a light bulb will transfer some of this energy to light energy and also some of the energy is going to be wasted into heat energy. But how do these charge carriers actually obtain their energy? We know they have some energy since they do work when they pass through the light bulb, which provides the light bulb with energy to create light energy and heat energy. But how do the charge carriers themselves get the energy? So this charge carrier is moving around the circuit and it has a certain value of energy E and we want to find out where it comes from. Circuits are usually powered by components like cells, batteries, and power packs. These components store energy as chemical energy. So for example, this battery here stores some chemical energy, and that's in this battery. They are also sometimes powered by components that generate energy in a different form to chemical energy. So for example, a circuit might be powered by a solar cell. And a solar cell uses light energy as its energy source. Or the circuit might use a dynamo as its energy source. And a dynamo uses movement to get energy, so it uses kinetic energy as its energy source. When the charge carriers travel through a battery, the battery does work on them, so they gain energy. So when this charge carrier passes through the battery, the battery is going to do some work on it, which is how it gains energy. Similar to how when the charge carrier passes through the lamp, it needs to do work on the lamp in order to pass through it, which is how the lamp gains energy. So the way these components are gaining and losing energy is by doing work on something else. The net result is that chemical energy stored in the battery is converted into electrical energy. So this battery contains chemical energy that it transfers to the electron, then this electron is moving around the circuit and it's carrying around electrical energy. So we can see that the chemical energy from the battery is transferred to electrical energy. And then this electrical energy is going to be transferred to the lamp, which is then going to transfer the energy to light energy and heat energy. So we've got lots of energy transfers going on here. The work done on these charge carriers per unit charge is defined as the electromotive force, EMF. The electromotive force of a component is the amount of energy it transfers from other forms to electrical energy per unit charge. So we need to be very careful here. Even though EMF is called electromotive force, it's not actually a force. It's the electrical energy per unit charge that the charge carriers passing through the component obtain. So it's not a force, it's energy per unit charge. So now we're going to look at an equation for EMF. We can write the electromotive force, EMF, in terms of an equation. So the EMF can be written as the work done divided by 
the charge. And this is because we've defined the EMF as the work done per unit charge carrier that actually passes through the component, for example, the battery. So that's how we get this equation. We divide work done by the charge. We can also write this equation in symbol form. So the symbol we use for EMF is this. It's an epsilon. And we represent the work done with W and the charge with Q. So this is our equation for EMF written out in symbols. And using this equation, we see that the unit of electromotive force is the volt, which is the same as for potential difference. So we can see that one volt is equal to one joule per coulomb, which is what we get from this equation for EMF. So we can see that EMF and potential difference have the same units. They both have units, the volt. And this actually makes sense because we've defined the EMF as the work done per unit charge as the charge passes through the battery, for example. And if we remember, the potential difference is the work done, again, divided by the charge. But in this case, it's the work done by the charge as it passes through a component. So it is essentially work done per unit charge, which is why we have the volt as a unit. For example, if a battery does 24 joules of work, moving two coulombs of charge through it, what is the EMF of the battery? So we've said that the work done by the battery is 24 joules. That's the work the battery does on the charge passing through it. And we've been told that the charge has value two coulombs. So we've got two coulombs of charge. So if we write down our equation for EMF, so EMF is equal to the work done divided by the charge, we can then calculate the EMF. So the work done is 24 joules, and we're going to divide this by the charge, which passes through the battery, which is two coulombs. So we end up with an EMF of 12 volts. So finally, we're going to look at an energy transfer calculation. We can use the equations for current EMF and potential difference to find the energy transferred from or to components in circuits. So here we have a circuit, we have a battery, and we have a lamp, which the battery is powering. We have our electrons, which are our charge carriers. And these electrons are moving around the circuit and we know they're going to move from the negative end of the battery to the positive end of the battery because they're repelled by the negative end and attracted to the positive end. And we know that the conventional current is going to flow in the opposite direction to the electron flow. So the current is going to flow from the positive end to the negative end like this. And we know that the electromotive force of the battery, the EMF, is equal to the work done divided by the charge. And we know that the potential difference V across the lamp is equal to the work done divided by the charge again. So that's everything we know about our circuit. So let's look at an example. A light bulb is connected in a circuit where the current is five amps and the potential difference across the light bulb is seven volts. How much energy is transferred to the light bulb in 2.5 hours? So we've been told that the current in our circuit is 5 amps. And we've also been told that the potential difference across our lamp is 7 volts. So our first step is to find the total charge that has travelled through the light bulb over this time by identifying and rearranging the equation for the current through the light bulb. So we know that the current travelling through the light bulb is given by the charge that passes through it divided by the time taken because we know that current is the rate of flow of charge. So we can find the total charge that passes through the light bulb by multiplying the current by the time taken, delta t. So we now have an expression for the charge. 
Now we need to substitute the values into the equation in SI units. So we've been told that the current is 5 amps. That's moving around the circuit, like so. So the change in charge, the charge that moves through the lamp, is going to be given by the current times the change in time. So our change in charge is given by 5 amps multiplied by the time taken for the charge to pass through the lamp. And we know that it's passing through the lamp for two and a half hours, but we need to convert two and a half hours in two seconds. So we know that there are 60 minutes in an hour, so we're first going to multiply this by 60. And then we know there are 60 seconds in a minute, so we're going to multiply this by 60 again to get the time in seconds. And this then gives us a total charge of 450,000 coulombs. Our third step is to identify and rearrange the equation for energy transferred by the light bulb. So we're going to be using the equation that the potential difference is equal to the work done divided by the charge moved, Q. And the work done is equal to the charge moved multiplied by the potential difference. So we're just taking the charge onto the other side. So this is the energy transferred by the light bulb. So now we just need to substitute the values into the equation and solve for the energy transferred. So we found that 450,000 coulombs of charge pass through the light bulb. So we can now find the energy transferred. So the energy transferred is given by the potential difference multiplied by the charge that passes through. So in this case, delta Q. And we were told in the question that the potential difference across the light bulb is 7 volts. So we're going to do 7 volts multiplied by the 450,000 coulombs of charge that pass through the light bulb. So this gives us a total energy transferred of 3,150,000 joules. And we're going to give our answer to two significant figures because that is the greatest number of significant figures that a quantity was given to us in the question. And this gives us a total energy of 3.2 megajoules to two significant figures. So we're giving our answer in megajoules because it's such a big amount of energy transferred. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.